So, this was the special edition of Dynamite from Rochester, New York, dedicated to the late Brody Lee since this was his hometown, and it kicked off with CM Punk coming out, and Punk came out and greeted the fans. No stage dive though, thanks New York, and then he took his place at the commentary table. And then Adam Cole came out and... Wait, am I watching the right week's show? What are we, just copy and pasting the lineup of past shows now? Anyways, Adam Cole and Jungle Boy came out for their match, and they were both so over. Cole's still riding his wave of momentum from his debut, and his entrance is obviously super fun to play along with. And Jungle Boy's theme is also super fun to sing along to, so these two were just two fan favorites. And they had a good back and forth match, and that's to be expected since these two are two of the absolute best talents in AEW right now, and there was a point when Jungle Boy hit a hurricanrana from inside the ring to Cole, who was standing on the apron, which sent them both to the floor below, and Punk yelled, what a maneuver, which was a hilarious jab at Vince. And then back in the ring, Cole hit a Pittsburgh sunrise on Jungle Boy for a really near fall, like you think that would have been it. But then Jungle Boy caught Cole in his snare trap submission, and I remember thinking at this part, if they even fuck fucking think about bringing the elite out here to help Cole, I'm gonna fucking lose it because I've seen enough screwy finishes in AEW. But thank God, Cole escaped, kicked Jungle Boy out of the ring, and while the ref was distracted, Cole hit a low blow on Jungle Boy, which set him up for the last shot, which got Cole the win. And then, while I was rocking out to Cole's bomb-ass music, the Elite came out and replaced it with their goofy-ass BTE theme song. But to be honest, I was just so relieved that they didn't interfere during the match that I didn't even care. And the Elite went ahead and did the typical Elite stuff where they hyped themselves up and jerked themselves off, and oh my god, I feel like every Elite promo is the fucking same. But then Kenny Omega starts talking about his match with Danielson last week and how he's not getting a rematch, and then Danielson came out and said that Kenny's got no balls, and I can only imagine how long that'll take before that becomes a t-shirt. I mean, if they can make an inconsequential line about some bubble into a real-life drink, then they can definitely make a t-shirt out of Kenny no balls. But anyways, Danielson challenged any member of the Elite to a match on Rampage, which, given the rumors I've heard, I think it might be Nick Jackson, and then Omega tried to bait Brian into the ring, but Brian brought out Christian and Jurassic Express to help him clear the elite out of the ring. And then the Lucha Bros were backstage and Andrade El Idolo continued his mission to try and recruit the Lucha Bros when he came up to them and challenged them to put their AAA tag team titles on the line, which they accepted. Except, I don't really understand how this is supposed to get them on your side, because when you first started going after these guys, it was to try and recruit them like you were trying to create this Latino heel super stable, but just pissing them off and being the cause of them potentially losing their championships is only going to make them hate you more. What are you... what are you trying to do? Anyways, next we had Matt Seidel and Dante Martin facing off against Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson, and once again, Dante Martin ate the pin. This guy was supposed to be the guy you were hyping up as being really exciting, and the crowd was getting behind him, yet you keep feeding him to these other guys. These people are going to lose faith in him eventually if you keep on making him lose, no matter how impressive his performance might be. And it's not even like Dante lost in a cool way. It was actually really abrupt the way he lost when Lee Johnson just hit this, I don't know what you call it, an ushigroshi or a shoulder breaker. I don't know, whatever it is. Dante got hit with it, and then he just got pinned. And it just felt like such a lackluster ending that I think it actually made Dante look worse. And then after the match, Cody tried calling out Malachi Black, and Arn discouraged him, and he started saying something about how if he was in a car and they were getting Grand Theft Autoed, that Cody would willingly give his car up, while Arn, on the other hand, would cap whoever was trying to steal his car. I don't know, I think he basically called Cody a pussy, and then he just walked out on Cody with Lee Johnson. And then we had a super quick trios match with Titty Master, Mad King, and Skateboard Kid with his mentor in their corner, the guy who couldn't get over the barricade, facing off against Bear and Country, and... 
Anthony Green. And they started brawling before we even began, but eventually Darby hit a coffin drop to the outside on both Bear and Country to take them out, and Mox and Kingston finished Green off in the ring with their Exploder Suplex slash Lariat combo, which I guess they're now calling the Violent Crown, and got the win. And then we had a backstage segment with Ruby Soho and Britt Baker, and the only reason that I bring this up is because I didn't mention last week how I felt about Britt beating Ruby to retain her title. But to be honest, I guess I wasn't too shocked, but I don't know. Having your hottest new female signee lose her title match when she's just picking up steam in AEW? Kinda weird, bro. I do feel like Ruby will actually be the one to dethrone Britt at some point in the future because I can't really see anybody on that roster that can beat Britt and have it make sense. And I think it's just a matter of when Ruby will beat Britt for the title. And if you're wondering how I know Ruby will be the one, just trust me. I'll show you later why I have a knack for predicting future champions. And then we had a 16-man tag team match. Jesus Christ, dude, 16 men? All right, sure, whatever, the more the merrier. And this was between the HFO and the team of Orange Cassidy and the Dark Order. And because this was in Brody's hometown of Rochester and was dedicated to him tonight, Dark Order obviously got a huge pop, even though there was some dissension within the group. And at one point, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, or maybe it was John Silver, I don't know. These bald white dudes all look the same. Evil Uno and Stu Silver were about to walk out of the match, but Amanda Huber, Brody Lee's wife, came out and disciplined her children into going back and helping the Dark Order win the match, which they did, and they all hugged and got back together. Hooray! And then next, we had a Leo Rush video package, and... I don't even know what to say about this, because I swore I thought this guy had retired, and I only remember him making that one appearance as the Joker card during a casino battle royale, but I guess he's all elite now? Okay. I don't know, I've just never really been super high on Leo Rush for a variety of reasons, so whether he signs or not, I really don't care. And then we had an FTR segment, which I think hypes up their comeback as a tag team, and then they do what seems like a shield pose with Tully. And then Dan Lambert was in the ring with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, and they basically do the same thing all heels do, where they talk about how good they are. I swear, sometimes it feels like these heels all have the same promo, and they just keep doing it week after week. Then they teased Hikaru Shida versus Serena Deeb for next week where Shida could possibly get her 50th win. And then we had a tag team match between TJ and the team of Penelope Ford and the Bunny. And in the end, Conti took out the Bunny with the tie KO and Anna Jay hit a spinning heel kick and transitioned into a choke to make Ford pass out for the win. And after the match, Brody Lee's son came out to a bunch of love from the two winning girls. And, you know, normally I would probably lay into this lucky little rascal for having more game right now at eight years old than I've had my whole adult life. But all things considered, I'ma let it slide for tonight. And then we had an MJF segment where he talks about guys who are the future of AEW and puts himself over. And one of the guys that MJF mentioned, Darby Allen, came out and got in MJF's face. And MJF, being the godly heel that he is, mentioned how Darby is straight edge because he went on a drive with his drunk uncle and his uncle died in a car crash that night. But the real travesty was that the wrong man died that night, but this is where shit got a little weird. So Darby tells MJF to keep talking because he won't break him mentally. And MJF hears this, and he doesn't say or do anything back to Darby. He literally just hears this, and then just tells Wardlow that they were leaving, and then they just leave the ring. And I expected while they were leaving that they would turn around quickly and catch Darby by surprise by jumping him, but no. They actually just left once they realized they couldn't break Darby mentally. It's like for everything MJF has said, this time, he was just at a loss for words. Like Darby literally challenged MJF to keep going and MJF backed down. 
This makes MJF look so bad. It doesn't make him look like a good heel at all because he just got verbally knocked off his perch by a baby face. I would at least try to get the last laugh in or something, you know? Like, if you're not going to take him out mentally, you should at least try to do it physically. And why wouldn't you try to do it physically? You have this behemoth of a man behind you at your beck and call, so you almost have nothing to worry about, even if you do try and attack Darby. What the fuck happened to you, you pussy? Why did you just back down so willingly and easily? Like, look at Wardlow. Even he seems confused as to why MJF is backing down. And then we had our main event, which was TNT champion Miro putting his title on the line against Sammy Guevara. And this was a great match. But in the end, Miro started ripping off all the turnbuckle pads. And with the help of a distraction from Fuego Del Sol, Sammy Guevara hit a running knee on Miro, who crashed into to the exposed turnbuckle and Guevara followed it up with a tornado DDT, a GTH, and finished things up with a 630 splash to become the new TNT champion. And this ending was just great. It makes Miro still look really strong because Sammy had to pull out everything to finally put him away and Sammy got to win his much deserved first championship in AEW. And remember before when I said that I think Ruby will be the one to dethrone Brit and I said trust me I have a knack for predicting future champions? Well check it out. And to be honest, I think if anybody can stop Miro, I think it will be Sammy Guevara because for some reason, I think he just screams TNT champion. Anyways, a pretty good show tonight and oh, I almost forgot. Sammy Guevara already has his first challenger to the TNT title next week. It's Bobby fucking Fish. AEW is so cool, bro. They'll just let anybody from any promotion come in to have dream matches. Like Sammy Guevara versus Bobby Fish for the TNT Championship on AEW Dynamite. Come on, man. That's pretty cool. And oh man, that means he's going to be backstage next week on Dynamite. And at some point, he'll probably run into Adam Cole. Hmm. Look at us. Hey, look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. 